Today I am going to be chatting with Mr Stephen Higginson who is one of our original tribe warriors. Um, Steve uh, came to us for the very first Alt Flesh show uh, and he replied to a casting call that I put out on Facebook. Never heard of him before and I, along he came on the day, walked for us at our very first Circo show, it was just fantastic, absolutely brilliant. Um, and he's been with us ever since. Not that we realised we were going to do a second show of course, or a third or a fourth or a fifth. But when we did, and when we started to get into our um, social consciousness photo shoots and concepts, and we were looking for people to help and volunteer and get involved, Steve was always there, uh, and he always had a really keen interest in getting involved and, and, and doing the good stuff. So he really has been there from the very beginning. So I caught up with him to find out his perspective on things, why he got involved, how he finds it, and uh, what he would like to, to see happen next. And yeah, I really hope you enjoy this, because he's a very, very special person. Um, he's one of these people who doesn't realise quite how inspirational he is and um, by being so open and so candid and sharing his story about his mental health and about his sexuality um, he really does help a lot of people especially men out there so I think it's great for him to know that and to value his worth and know how important he is and to keep doing what he's doing and to keep on sharing his story and keep talking to people and you know he, behind the scenes quite a lot of the time nobody sees what uh, what people go through and nobody sees what people do to help these unsung heroes and we have a lot of them in our tribe and i'm going to cover each and every one of them we're going to share their stories but stephen is when someone's suffering when someone's going through something he's the first one there in the middle of the night on the phone when no one else is there there to support them talk them through anything they need to just to be a shoulder to cry on He'll always pop up with a little video for somebody in an inbox to, to make them feel better when he finds out they're struggling and they're suffering. So that takes a really special person to do that. And he doesn't do it for the glory, he doesn't do it for his own ego. He does it because he knows he can he can make a difference and he really does want to help. So uh, really, really proud of this one. And um, I hope he, he keeps going and going from strength to strength and realises how important he is. So thank you, Stephen. You're an absolute legend. And I hope you enjoy watching this little clip. So, Steve. Hello. You were one of the very first models we ever had, so you'd answered to your casting call if I remember. I yeah. put a shout out on Facebook. All those years ago. I hope you pop, and it's like, oh, there he is. So, just give me a little bit of um, a brief history of, of how you how you found the very first show, what your what your sort of experience was on that very first time meeting everybody. That's my first question to you. Brilliant. Um, I was dead nervous. First time doing anything like that. Um, and it's just the atmosphere really that like, straight away is relaxed. And no one was drinking or nothing, it was like just chilled and... That was, was really unusual, wasn't it? No one was just like... No, so, something like that normally, I'd have a drink. Yeah. And I, I didn't have to, and I was like, oh... This is weird. This is weird, sober. This is new. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, I remember finishing the first one, people just left feeling pumped, that was amazing. That's good, that's really good to know. Because at the time, I wasn't sure what was going to happen or... I didn't think we were going to do more than one show, I just wanted that one thing to be really good, so I wasn't expecting the kind of feedback we got afterwards but I didn't know a lot of the models that came I didn't know when I met before they just answered the casting calls and, and then the feedback I'd had afterwards was pretty much what you said and it wasn't something that was planned I hadn't gone into it thinking I need to make sure that everybody you know feels this way and that everybody gives this feedback afterwards so from my point of view it's nice that it was just it happened that way yeah. because there's such good people involved it was a natural sort of thing to happen so what, go on, you were going to say something I was just going to say everyone picked up that everyone, most people were nervous. So the more experienced people were like really, you know, saying just relax, chill, you can do it. And it was just like a really supportive atmosphere, which you never support. really had. So. Yeah, because you've not, yeah, I know, because we, we talked since then, I know you've not had that before. So that's, it's good for, for people to know that there is another way. It's not mm. always as you would expect it to be. There are people out there that will give you support. And especially in fashion as well, it's generally speaking quite cutthroat and quite... Yeah. Like nasty because I mean, you, you, but you're experienced. I've been in it for donkey years, and the majority of people that I've been around previously, it's it takes a real sort of get hit to your self esteem and to your self worth just by being around the negative vibes yeah. and negative people. Mood so, movers, oh, yeah, so. yeah, it's mood movers. I like that. I wouldn't use that. But yeah, so it's nice to know that we've been able to bring that a little bit that supportive in you know in society as we wanted to do, but also in fashion and with that, with our actual group of people. And a few people have said the same thing that. Uh, that they felt supported and um, for me because I'd had a chat with Lindy as well afterwards because that was the first time I'd met Lindy and then she said I want to come on board I want to come on board and help for the same reasons as you just said and um, I was afterwards I thought do you know what I hadn't even considered the fact that I should have been there supporting everybody and when I when I afterwards I thought do you know that could have gone either way because I didn't realize that everybody involved was going to be really anxious and nervous 
so I hadn't thought I needed to support anybody. So I was really glad that everybody had, but it wasn't a conscious decision. So again, Great. that's just because of the people. The people that we got yeah. were really nice and involved. It's so slightly bonkers. It helps, doesn't it? It always helps. <laughs> Yeah. But since then, we've done a fair few things and it's kind of grown into something brilliant. So it's nice to be able to catch up with you as someone that was there on the first. Because there's not that many people really True, that yeah. have been right there from the very first one and still followed the journey along, which is which is really nice. Any specific highlights that stand out for you? What we've done so far? Well, Maybe on three years now. It feels like about 23 though, doesn't it? got to be the um, male positive body positivity shoot. And, the, and then what happened after that? That was... Oh, yeah. I tell people, and they're like, sure, I'm like, yeah. It's like a really random weekend, and I've been out on the Saturday, it was rough. And you, I remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I got to Lindy, thinking of booze. She's like, you okay? Like, yeah. Bacon okay. butty, off, off we went. Road trip to London. I think I had to sleep in the car, didn't I? So. <laughs> I know, yeah, but nobody expected that to happen. I suppose it's the way it is, isn't it? If, it's, if we hit on something current, then we get the awareness that we need. And that's, that's brilliant, because that's, that's obviously this one was fantastic. It's the most sort of awareness we've had. And I think when the, the American um, online magazine that got us did that blog, that got us a million mark of... That edited out Piers Morgan. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was great, wasn't it? Like, ah, thank you, finally, somebody. Found the important bits in there. Yeah. So that got us past a million. We've not had anything like that ever since. So that I'm, I'm, that's one of my proud, proudest moments as well. Um, and, but again, the other side of it makes me wish that just everything that we do is so important and I wish we could get that kind of awareness for everything. Yeah. So that sometimes makes me think, and, and, and when we were doing it as well at the time when I was watching, because me and Lindsay were behind the set watching you like, and we were like literally mama wolves, both of us like, oh, don't you dare. Was it in the shoe? It was in the shoe, wasn't it? The shoe? Yeah. No, but in this building, ah, yeah. upstairs. You know what I mean, when we were on, um, on the telly oh, okay. and that set, because <laughs> we were just like, don't you pick on our boys. <laughs> and I can remember watching thinking, this is so good because you were handling yourself so brilliantly and you were just firing back with everything that you should have fired back with. But I was thinking, brilliant, because it is going to get awareness out there. But I could see the reason that they wanted to pick up on the story was just because it made a good story mm. for them. Do you know what I mean? For viewing yeah. and for, to make... Feel the story. Yeah, then. feel the story. And so that Piers could get a few jokes in, a few cracks. And it just felt that's why mainstream media picks up on these things. Yeah. But from our point of view, it's just a happy side effect that... It gets us awareness, doesn't it? Something to tell me yeah. in the future when they're older. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Famous Uncle Steve. So a last question for now, and I'm gonna come back and revisit this to talk to you again. What um, I want to know from each person that I chat to, because everybody seems to have a different story, and that's another thing that I'm really aware of. When I started this, I wanted to get people together in the industry um, that had experience, that wanted to come and show their skills to support the wider public. Then after the first show, it became really evident that everybody that was donating their time had these issues and wanted mm -hmm. to. That's the that's why they were doing it because they wanted to help other people. And I didn't realise that until we started that a hundred percent of the people that are involved. And we've had a couple of hundred people over th three years that have come and gone and stayed with bigger, us. Bigger, bigger, yeah, bigger. and every single one, one hundred percent have have got some kind of issue. Um, a lot of them are mental health issues, anxiety, depression, lots of you know body positivity. There's domestic abuse issues. There's physical disability, there's, mm -hmm. look, everybody has something and that's why they're so passionate and, and coming to us to help. So from your experience, and you're quite open about your um, experiences with your mental health mm -hmm. issues and sexuality and things like that, and you've helped us loads with that, what advice, what's your best bit of advice that you could give, if you were looking back, what would you give your your 10 year old self, <laughs> what piece of advice would you give? Um, I didn't start doing things really since so I was about 30, so 34 now, but Growing up, I was told I could do it, and I just didn't have the confidence in myself. And it's just something like doing these events that built it slowly, and it did. It, it was slowly. It wasn't like an overnight fix. And then one thing led to another, and then the more more opportunities came up, and I loved it. So if I was to speak to my ten year old self now, it would be to give your head a wobble, stop being so hard on yourself, and try it. Yeah. Because I've struggled to get an agent. Because I'm 34 or tattooed, I'm not too ah, sure. Ah, so you think, yeah. You still yeah. think there's that sort of stigma attached with everything, really, isn't there? Yeah. They've got a very specific remit of what they want, what works for them, so you think that's probably. I just think if I started it when I was 20 rather than 30, different. yeah, completely different. But I enjoy it, I enjoy what happens now and stuff, and I don't do much anymore. But, but what you do, you're enjoying. Yeah, and that, the stuff with you guys, I, I said to, um, to Brian before the shoot, it's so easy to, to just look good for a photo shoot, but stuff we do is emotional, so that's harder to do. It is, isn't it? And yeah. especially like the shoot we just done with 
can you get, don't want to get too much away. Yeah, yeah, you can, it's fine, then. Um, yeah. It was like, sort of, I'm trying to be sad, but yeah. then I've got little Luna there being hilarious. I know, and you're trying to get the emotion across, yeah. I'm trying, yeah, but that was hard. I like doing stuff like that. Yeah. Like my depression stuff is part of me. Yeah. So, pointless hiding it. No, I, I love that about you, the fact that you were, and, and you don't realise quite how it's inspiring you are to other people, you're just like, I've been through it, I'm there, I'm going to see if I can help other people, but I don't think you realise quite how much you do, just by just by being dead honest, mm -hmm. and there's no edge to it with you, right, you're not kind of like, everybody over here, I have a story to tell you, listen to me, it's not about any kind of ego thing, or any kind of um, poor me, or narcissism, it's purely about, all oh, these other people I know are going through this, so. That's why I do it, I just want to try and normalise it. Yeah. So, like example the other day, I had a bit of, an, um, a, bit of a panic attack at the bus stop, silly, but Ended up getting the wrong bus because it was, you know, fight or flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bus was lovely and quiet though, it was ugly. Was but it? Yeah, um, I put that on Facebook and it was yeah. just normalising it every day, it's laughing good. at myself. But it's, good, it's good for you as well because that's kind of therapeutic because you can get it out of your mind and think, right, I'm going to put it out and then that's something else that I've done, I've, I've accomplished, I got from A to B and I can share that story. So it's kind of cathartic for you to get mm. it out rather than thinking, just keeping it in. But it's so much more important for other people because there'll be somebody that read that post that has been through exactly the same thing, never talked, never spoken about it, never admitted that they have these feelings. Exactly. And they'll look at it and go, oh, okay, I've, 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 you know, he's talking about it. I didn't so. really know what anxiety was, really. I just thought, it, like, I've overthought all my life, so I thought it was normal. Yeah. And then, like, when I started speaking to the doctors and stuff, they were like, oh, it's anxiety. I was like, what? Well, yeah, nice. Different. And again, we've been through this before with male mental health. It's different. It's, again, it's another sort of obstacle to overcome with, with sort of the whole gender debate because girls are much more likely and much more... Um, they find it easier to talk about things and, sort of, and men have much more difficult times. So things like the things that we've done are hugely important and what we've been doing today especially in getting that awareness out there that it's, you have to talk. I've just come back from a course, I've just done um, mental health first aid and suicide awareness and suicide yeah. prevention and loads of the statistics that I learned were about the difference between men and women in mental health and the support they get and the diagnosis and medication and self-medicating and all that. So it is crucially, crucially important. It's really good. So I'm dead proud of you for what, you, for what you're you. doing as well. Brilliant. So on to the next uh, adventure. So I'll have a hug before we go. Thank you, mate. You're welcome. All right. See you soon. Bye. Bye.